Celtic have a long list of heroes and legends. The Lisbon Lions are on a pedestal of their own, but perhaps the most tragic of all the legends is the story of the Prince of Goalkeepers, John Thompson. Thompson was born in Kirkcaldy, Fife in 1909 and grew up in the nearby mining town of Cardendon. He showed early promise as a goalkeeper in his school days, but at the age of 14 years old, he followed in his father, John Senior's footsteps by taking up a job in the Bow Hill Colliery where he was posted 300 yards below the surface in the coal mine. He continued to play football and had a year with Bow Hill Rovers in the Fife Junior League before moving to Wellesley Juniors. In 1926, Celtic manager Willie Mealy sent a scout to a Wellesley match to look at the opposition's goalkeeper, but Thompson performed so well that the scout came back with a report that Mealy should sign him instead. Shortly afterwards, Celtic paid £10 for the 17-year-old goalkeeper, and in February 1927, he made his debut, keeping his place in the team as the club went on to win the Scottish Cup in his first season. Thompson continued to prove himself as Celtic's number one, despite his small stature. He was only 5 foot 9, but what he lacked in size, he made up with heart as shown when he broke his jaw, several ribs, damaged his collarbone and lost two teeth during a game against Airdrie Onions in 1930. Thompson would make his debut for Scotland later that year and added another three caps over the next year. Celtic and Thompson won another Scottish Cup in 1931, which was the second for the goalkeeper and his fifth honour overall, with three Glasgow Cup winners medals also in the trophy cabinet. As Celtic's in Scotland's number one, the future looked to be full of promise for Thompson. But sadly, this story has a tragic ending. On the 5th of September 1931, he was keeping goal for Celtic against Rangers at Ibrox. And shortly after half-time, Sam English was played in on goal and Thompson, brave as always, dived at his feet to make the save. Unfortunately, in the collision, Thompson's head collided with the Rangers man's knee and it resulted in a fractured skull and a ruptured artery in his temple. He received treatment on the pitch before being whisked off to the Victoria Infirmary in Glasgow. He had a two-inch depression on his skull and suffered a major convulsion which led to doctors attempting emergency surgery to reduce the pressure from the swelling on his brain, but they were unable to save him and Thompson passed away that evening. The football community was stunned, none more so than Sam English. It was a complete accident and the inquest cleared him of any wrongdoing but the incident followed him for the rest of his time in Scotland, with fans jeering his every touch. He soon left for England, but retired just seven years later, whilst in his late twenties. He never recovered from the incident, and on his retirement said that the last seven years were joyless sport. Thompson's funeral was a huge event, with over 30,000 people in attendance, many of whom walked the 55 miles from Glasgow to his hometown of Cardendon. 2,000 people made the journey by train, with another 20,000 at the train station in Glasgow, unable to get a place on a train or simply unable to afford a ticket. The legend of John Thompson, or the Prince of Goalkeepers as he's known, continues to grow. He has been the topic of books, songs and even plays over the years. In 2008, he was inducted into the Scottish Football Hall of Fame, and on the 80th anniversary of his death in 2011, a walk was held in his memory with fans following the path the mourners took in 1931 from Glasgow to Cardendon. On his grave, the inscription reads, They never die who live in the hearts they leave behind. And it's fair to say that as long as there is a Celtic football club, the legend of the Prince of Goalkeepers will never die.